So let's get started. So before everything, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm Fernando Vizcaino. I'm one of the associates of the Data Meaning Enablement Team. I'm also an Outrix ACE, and I'm uh, all around certified. So I have uh, the designer certification, the server, and also all related to the partner certification, including the server as well. So I'm one of the Outrix community top computer contributors there. I'm in the uh, top 10 ranking of the most solved questions. So if you are uh, using the Outrix community to anything or to ans ask any questions that you have, maybe I have ha helped you there. I'm working uh, with Outrix for seven years. Prior to that, I was working mainly, mainly with uh, BI tools, specifically with the Click platform. So uh, I know a lot about those integrations between uh, the, the, the Outrix part. And, and if you want to do a data preparation step and then connecting that to, to a uh, analytical platform as well, to a data viz tool. But other than that, actually, I, I love working with Outrix. I think I'm, I'm in a relationship, a serious relationship with Outrix. So I'm doing everything. Uh, in my personal stuff as well. So for example, I'm doing uh, my cash flow in Outrix. So I'm, I'm reading all my uh, credit card statements, even being PDF, I'm able to read everything. I'm also uh, getting uh, the best deal. So I, I'm, I'm connecting uh, through API to a lot of different drug stores and get the best price for medicaments for, for my family. And also I have one challenge since I'm a chess player, a chess enthusiast, I'm thinking about uh, creating uh, a, a basic, of course, it's a, a really basic engine with Outrix to start playing chess with me. So that's my challenge. If any uh, of you uh, has tried to develop that, please go ahead and uh, tell me on the chat, please. So today, it's the first session of a seven, seven session series here. So today we are going to be talking uh, about the introduction to the Outrix server. So the whole idea here is for you uh, to understand it, to, to have a high level overview of the backend of the Outrix server. And we are gonna be talking about all the components that you have there, as well as how you can be prepared for your first deployment. After that, we are going to be covering the expanded server scaling. So it's going to be a weekly series here. So next Wednesday, we are going to be talking about that. And it's a way so for you that already has a single node Outrix server and you want to start thinking about a more robust node server environment. So uh, what you need to do uh, to start thinking about that and what are the main capabilities that you need to be worried? or what are the questions that you need to start asking your IT in order for you to get that done. Thirdly, well, we are gonna be uh, talking about the installation and deployment. So everything from configuring your system settings for all the configuration and best practice and everything also related to the backup and restoration for you to, to be aware of everything that can be done here within your Outrix platform. Then we are gonna start talking about the user side overview. So you're gonna be understand the front end, how you can uh, publish a workflow, how you share those workflows and how you can start leveraging uh, the Outrix server platform for your end users to, to start connecting, to start using everything that you are building already in your Outrix designer. And of course, we are gonna have the administrative overview here to talk about uh, how you can control everything that you have inside your, your Outrix server. So it's more often uh, related to the, an IT perspective, an IT point of view here, but it's in order for you to, to start sharing and leveraging everything that you can control and monitor from an administrative point of view. And of course, we have two additional sessions this year. We're gonna be talking about uh, the API and everything that can be done with that. Of course, with Outrix Designer, you are able already to uh, call any other platform, any other environment using the Outrix Designer, using specifically the download tool to get that done. But now 
you will uh, find out how you can use other platforms to call Outrix and run workflows from, for, for example, from your, your web server, from your, your web, for, from, from the browser. And also lastly, our last session, and of course, last but not least, we're gonna be talking about the production process. So, okay, you have a workflow in your Outrix designer, but how uh, can you, uh, how can you publish that to your Outrix server? and how you can start sharing. And what are the things that you need to be aware when publishing that? What are the best practices? So there are a lot of things that we can talk about here and also a way for you to leverage the analytical apps that maybe you are already uh, developing from within the Outrix Designer. So how you will be able to use that from within your Outrix server platform, okay? so. Other than that, we have a Q&A page there. So if you have any questions whatsoever, you can uh, ask there. I have two fellow ACES here helping me out. So we have Andrew King here and Thales Donizetti as well. So they are actually more experienced ACES. So you can ask anything that you would like. And I challenge you to ask something that they don't already know. But let's get started. So at the first session here, we're going to be talking about, of course, the introduction to Outrix server. So we're going to start understanding what the Outrix server is for. But also, we're going to touch a bit on the scalability and also the architecture. We have a session specifically to talk about scaling your Outrix server. But here, we're going to have a few, a few things for you to, to be aware of what can be done even if it is your first deployment for our agenda today. So first, we're going to talk about an Outrix server overview. So we're going to start understand what Outrix server really is and some of the features as well of the benefits that you find inside the server and what are the main differences between designer and server. We are going to be talking about all the components that you have and how they interact they all interact to each other. I'm gonna be showing here as well, a, a brief overview of the gallery. So for those that had, had never seen the gallery working, your front end, I'm gonna show you very briefly here in order for you to understand uh, from a front end perspective, how everything works, but it's gonna be mainly dedicated, but that this webinar is gonna be mainly dedicated to the back end. You're gonna understand as well the Outrix server process here. So when you run a workflow, what actually happens on the back end in a way that you can uh, start seeing uh, the logging issues that you may have, the connection issues that you may have between those components. And also, when we talk about the scalability, you start understand how you can scale your server and why you need to do so. And lastly, we are going to be talking about planning out, out your implementation. And we are going to be providing a documentation for all the attendants here, for all the participants, with a checklist for everything that you need to have prior to installing an Outrix server. But once again, if you have any questions, whatsoever, it can be related to this session or any other session, go to the Q&A that we have two of the most experienced Outrix uh, users globally tackling everything that you have there. Okay, so first talk about the Outrix server environment. So of course, uh, if you are here, maybe you are already using the Outrix designer. So for Anything that you have there, you can be using for data preparation only. You can be, be using that for uh, predictive analytics. So that, there are a lot of different capabilities that Outrix Designer already provides to you. But in order for you to scale that, for you to have a more robust environment, so it's, you need to start thinking about Outrix Server. And how do you identify that you need an Outrix server or that an Outrix server will be the, a, a good choice for you. So first thing, we, we have actually a few, few questions here. So if a user is starting to, to ask IT, so how can I make my workflow run faster? 
So I have a great, uh, a great machine here already. So it can be uh, 16 gigs or more. I have SSD, I have a lot of different stuff in my machine, but I want my workflow to run faster. What if I want to schedule my workflow? So I don't, don't need to keep pressing the run button. So I have 30 or 20 process already developed because I'm uh, automating everything that I was doing manually with Autorx Designer, but now I need to find a way of running then weekly, daily, monthly, it doesn't really matter. And what if you want to check your workflow results from 30 days ago? So do, do you have that file yet? And what if you have a, a lot of users? So when you start using Outrix Designer, you can see that a lot of the different users start getting really interested about the tool. But, but for some of them, maybe they don't have tech, technical knowledge or maybe they don't have the time to develop. So how can I give them access to what I'm building. And from an IT perspective, so I have a lot of designers there, a lot of different workflows. So how can I manage everything that is going on there in my company? How can I, and one of the best actually, how can I make the Outrix designer users' lives better? So if you have any of those questions already, that's, that's the way to go. So you need to, to think about Outrix Designer. So of course, have four main capabilities here. So have scale. So you will be able to run multiple workflows. You'll be able to share that to a lot of different set of users. You'll be able to schedule as well as govern everything. And we'll be uh, talking a, a lot about these different functionalities that you have in Outrix server. So you have here, everything is happening from within the designer. So you start building your workflows and business solutions it can be from data prep to advanced analytics. And you start publishing that to your Outrix server. And you can think of the Outrix server uh, as two parts actually. So you have the back end, and you have the front end. So in the back end, you start uh, automating your scheduling. So you will be able to, to refresh your data. So you have a data source that as you want to automatically refresh the data. And you don't need to, to be aware of that. You don't need to be concerned about that. With this, with the Outrix Designer, as I mentioned before, you, you have already the capability to, to ask, to, to request data from other platforms. But now you'll be able for everything that you are publishing for all the analytical apps here, workflows that you are publishing to your Outrix server, you will be able to call from a different platform. So let's think, for example, that you have uh, a browser there, a site where the user uh, needs to register actually, and you can do a credit scoring, for example. So that's something that you can uh, attach or connect that, uh, that form to Outrix server as well as the part of the credit scoring and return that automatically and really fast for the user that are registering. And of course, everything related to administration monitoring. So you'll be able to check all the schedules, all the data, all the logins as well of everything that is happening for all the users, all right? And when you think about the front end, so you have an web interface for the users, the developers, but also the end users to start sharing workflows, to start scheduling those workflows. And you have also here a built-in security. And the idea here is that you can have permissions, you can have credentials. So you can start sharing connections to the, to the Outrex Designer users. And you don't need to, to start sharing the password anymore. You can start directing a connection to the dev. And when you think when you, that connection, uh, when all the, the development were made to that connection, you can dynamically change that into a production connection. So the users won't be, be able, to, won't need to be concerned about that as well. You can start leveraging your active directory as well and your user groups 
required to share those workflows specifically to one specific area. Or for example, you have one AD group for Outrix developers and you have all the permissions for those users. And for all the other end users, they'll be able to see, but they won't be able to have uh, the permissions that an Outrix developer has or an administrator administration has. And of course, within the Outrix server, you will be able to scale everything here. So you'll be able to scale the number of workflows that you are running, uh, the database that you are uh, writing the data to, and everything. But this is something that we're going to touch in a few, in few moments, and also in other sessions as well. And of course, here, the main goal is for your end users, your data consumers, to start leveraging Outrix for the, their processes as well. So it can be using by using Tableau. So you can use the Outrix to prepare everything for the Tableau, for the BI tool that you have there. It can be Tableau, it can be Click, SciSense, anything that you have there. But it can also, for you to create Excel files, it can be a simple workflow there, a simple process, a simple manual process that you had there. And you want that to be automatically, as well as connecting to any cloud environment that you have there. So you, can, you want everything to be updated in your Salesforce. I want your workflow to be sending uh, emails dynamically. So that's everything that you have there. So you have a lot of different capabilities. Of course, we will be touching in each one of those functionalities, but let's go ahead. So first, when you think about scaling, so you have the option there to schedule your workflow as well as consuming all the data that you have there. So if you want to schedule a workflow 10 days ago, you will be able to see all the logins related to that schedule as well as the output that was, was created from within that scheduler, you'll be able to scale your process. So your user will be able to run a lot of workflows at the same time, as well as running heavier workflows. And of course, you have a production ready platform. So you will start checking, uh, when the, we start talking about the installing and deployment, that's really easy for you to configure and share and collaborate. Everything related to the Outrix server, it's the same as the Outrix designer is. So it's, it is really easy for you to configure everything. But also we have the possibility here for you to create applications. So for the end user with no knowledge whatsoever about designer, or about data preparation or Excel, we will provide him a, a form, for example, a form, but right? he can select, for example, the date ranges for a, for a SQL query, or they want to, to, to filter for a specific customer. And everything is done from within a form. And in the back end, you have an Outrix engine processing everything for you. Once again, you have the possibility for APIs. So you, you, you have all the integration to, to other platforms, but also from other platforms. So both ways, both directions. And if you have a repeatable process, you will be able to also leverage our macros. So the macros is if you have a, a process and you can, you can transform that into a single tool, tool and start sharing that with other users and they will be able to use that as well. But of course, talking about the governance for the, the IT administrators there that are concerned about what, what you can control from within the Outrix server. So we'll be able to do actually everything. So have here a, a part where you can administer everything in, as well as monitor. So have a usage report in there uh, related to what the users, how many users are there. Of course, that's the, the simple thing for you to check, but what are the workflows that are being run the most? 
that's other thing that you can, of course, that you have a lot of different stuff here, but you have a, a 36 view of everything that is happening inside your Outreach server, as well as data management. So you'll be able to, once again, leverage your Active Directory groups in order for you to separate everything that the user are seeing. We have a lot of different uh, functionalities here for you to control everything. For example, the access to a shared folder. So you can configure a workflow for, for the user uh, to, to need to provide the credential in order for you to run that workflow. And if they don't have the credential, Autoexerve won't be able to assess, access a specific data source or a specific share folder. And also everything related to version control. So if you want, so if your users, your developers are trying to, to build a very complex uh, workflow and start to get it again, really complicated and they want to start collaborating with themselves. So have here an idea for a start version in your workflow and controlling everything that everyone is developing from within the Outreach server as well. All right. So talking about the benefits, I know we talk a lot about the functionalities, but let's think about actually three main benefits that we have there. So the first one, of course, is for the user to be able to run multiple workflow or workflows or heavier workflows. And you will be able to also to, to delegate to a specific part of your Outreach server so that will only run the workflows that are critical. That's one thing that you can also do or for that user. Everything that that, that user does is non-critical. You can also share everything with the end users and even with the end users that has no knowledge of Outreach Designer and you have a, a visual interface, a ease of use interface for those users to start leveraging, start using everything that you may have here in your Outreach server environments. But of course, from the IT perspective, so you have ways for managing everything in the downtime, you have ways for backing up your server so you won't have any problem whatsoever. And that's that. But let's talk about the Outrix gallery very brief, briefly. So the idea here, of course, and once again, uh, this session is gonna be about the back end of the Outrix server, but I always prefer to show you what you are actually seeing on the front end for you to start visualizing what is actually happening. So the first step here is for you to understand actually uh, what you have in your front, front, your front end. So you have your workflow here, so you publish your, your Alteryx designer user that published that workflow to a studio. From within your studio, you will be able to share that to a specific set of users. So it's all private. And here in the example, you have a sales connection, sales collection and a marketing collection as well as sharing publicly to everyone in your gallery. And you have ways for separating those workflows to so have a reporting district, a spatial district, and so on. So the whole idea here is that the end user, actually the developer has ways of sharing those workflows to the end user as well as the administrators. So, and you have your workflow and that's actually what you are seeing. Of course, that I eliminated, deleted some of the functionalities here because we will be talking about those in the next session, the user, user side overview of the gallery, but have a lot of different functions here going on. But the whole idea is that from within your workflow, you will be able to run your workflow. You will be able to schedule, to download that workflow if you want to check anything, but you will be able to also check all the jobs. So all the time that you have run that workflow, as well as the logins, the outputs. So that's, that's what the front end looks like. And of course, when you click here in the run button, you can provide the user the experience to select some of the things here. So the user will be able to like the star, the trade area here, for example, and after clicking in run, they will be able to consume a report. 
but it could be a file as well. Or it could be uh, nothing. It could be an email sent to, to someone uh, inbox. Or a data source being updated, right? So that's the whole idea. It's only for you to understand what is actually happening on the front end. And now we are going to talk about the back end of things here. So first about the Autrex architecture. That's all the components there. So I have here the designer, you have ways of scheduling, as I told you already, the gallery, the user interface, where the end users can connect from the web browser. And of course, from the designer, you are able to schedule the workflows. So you can schedule that to your server, but also you can use uh, the, the controller here to start scheduling in your own machine, right? We will be able to connect that to your gallery in order for your users to start consuming that data. So it can be an analytical app, it can be a workflow, a simple workflow there. And also you will be able to schedule the workflows from the web browser as well. So you have a lot of different ways for scheduling, for publishing, for using your Outreach server for what you actually need it. Also, related to the components, you have the Outrix engine. It's the same engine that you have already in your Outrix designer. So it's responsible for reading, writing, and it, it's where all the data preparation is happening. It's, it can be for files, data sources, download from from the web, or anything else that you have there, right? And we're gonna touch that later. But you also have the service layer here. And that's where everything going on, actually. You have the controller. So it's actually the brain of your whole process. And this is also a back and forth for, from the controller to the worker, from the database to the controller, to scheduler to the controller. So it's actually what is controlling everything. It, that's why it's a controller. As you can see here as well, we have one single server dealing with all the components. So maybe if you have a lot of users or maybe you have a lot of schedules or a, a lot of workflows running here, that's when you need to think about scaling your Outreach server. Because as of now, you have everything happening in the same server. Of course, this, we're going to be talking about this in other slides in the next session as well. But this is a way for you to, to think about it. This is how your Outreach server really works. So talking about the components. So the first one is your service layer. So yeah, this is the foundation of your Outreach server architecture. So you have the controller, the worker, and the database here. And it's, it's what orchest orchestrates the workflow processing and also manages the job queue. So your, your Outreach server, it has a limit of how many workflows you can run simultaneously. Of course, that's something that you can, you will be able to configure. And you will understand why you need to configure that as well. But that's the whole idea for the service layer. And talking about the controller, controller itself. So it's the one managing the worker job queue. And it also delegates job to the worker. So for each worker, the best practice is for you to run two workflows simultaneously at the same time. So the idea here is that the controller is giving job to that worker, but always keeping in mind that it only can send two or three at the same time. But also the controller, controllers is, is also what supports the Outreach Gallery. So if you have an application there, and the user are filling a form, that's done and that's managed by our controller, as well as everything related to the API connections. So if you have other environments calling the Outreach server, it's all managed by your controller here. You have the worker as well, that's constantly talking to your the worker that's constantly talking to your 
controller and it's responsible for the Outrix engines. So the engine that I just show you, the worker is responsible for that. And that's responsible for all the out outputs for any of the workflows. It's responsible as well for the map tiles. So you have, for example, in your analytical apps, you have a map box, right? They're using it to select a place from within a map. That's the worker that's hindering everything and also serves in the insights. And we're going to talk about insights in our other sessions. So the idea here is that you have only one worker per Outrix engine, but you can have multiple Outrix engines per worker, right? And the idea for the worker, since it's uh, what manages the Outrix engine, so you can use that to as a queue worker only or a map tile worker only. So this one running the processes or running the mapping tile, the spatial, everything that you have there that is spatial. For example, that map box that I just mentioned. As well, and it can start, of course, when it starts scaling and having more workers, you can have a worker for a data science team, for example, or one worker for advanced analytics. Are the workers set, set by priority? So I have one worker that runs all the critical processes and all the others run everything else from your gallery. So I have always one work dedicated to that. The engine, so that's what it's running everything. It's a high-speed data process processing. The execution, of course, can occur in multiple threads and cores, but that's only when the AMP engine is activated. So that's one uh, needs functionality within your Outrix designer. And what happens here, so it runs in memory actually. And when you don't have a memory available, the engine will start writing temp files. And after the process finished, of course, it automatically deletes everything there. Regarding the database, so you have two options there. You have the embed one and the user managed one. So the, the only thing here that's worth mentioning is that for the embed one, it's the one with a single node environment. When we start thinking about the user managed is when you start scaling your MongoDB as well. So you'll be able to use replica sets here in the user managed instance of your MongoDB. And inside of the data sets, you have everything related to workflows, application files, job queues, results, and so on. And you have a usage report that gets all this data and transform this into a single dashboard for you. It can be a dashboard uh, inside the gallery or a tableau dashboard as well for you to analyze everything that is actually happening inside your Outrix gallery and Outrix server. Lastly, we have this is actually not a component itself, but it's what is responsible for all the scheduling. So you can send schedules from designer to server. But as well here, you have the jobs that are added to the worker queue and sent to the schedule to process everything. Talk about Outrix server processes. So what is happening on the back end when you publish a workflow? So the first thing that happens here is actually your Outrix designer is connected to your Outrix gallery, but also you are able to schedule from the designer. And when you publish that workflow to your gallery, this is sent to our MongoDB instance, once again, embed or user manage, and it keep here back and forth for you to start to understand so far, everything that is being done on the gallery. Of course, you have the controller here, managing everything that is happening. But the whole idea here is that you have the database components and that 
when a user access your workflow, so the Outrix gallery, get the data from the database components and start showing everything in your app web browser. And once again, it's a back and forth here. So if you have any form there for any analytical web for your user to fill, that's what's actually happening here. For the manual run, it's basically the same thing. So if you want to run the workflows from the web browser, so you need to access that from the gallery, the gallery will send that information for the controller. And the controller is always talking to the worker. So the working saying here that the worker doesn't, doesn't have any job. So it's, it's free to run anything. So the controller delegates the job to the worker that sends that to the engine components. The engine components run the, runs the workflow and produces all the outputs and login. That's all loaded here to the database components. And it's the same thing. So you go to the gallery and you, you have access to everything inside your web browser, right? And you have logs for, for all of that that is happening here. You have access to everything from the logs for all the communication that is happening from one component to another. And the last process here is when you have an automated and scheduled run. So you have here the scheduler, always monitoring the data set, the database, the MongoDB. And if it's the right time, then the scheduler sends the information to the controller. So, hey, controller, you need to run that job. And if it delegates, so if you have the controllers is always aware of the free workers that you may have there. And then it's gonna be all sent to the always specific worker. Once again, sent to engine that process the outputs and it's all saved here. All the outputs, all the logins, who have run, the time that it take to run that workflow, right? Everything, so we will be aware of everything that is happening here. Well, let's touch really briefly here in the scalability overview. So when we think about scaling, actually we can think about three things. And we also talked about this a lot in the previous, previous slides. But the whole idea here is that, okay, so have performance de demands. You want to run more workflows or run heavier workflows. So that's one option. The second option is that you have a lot of web users and users trying to run the workflows there. And for each, each workflow that each web user and user runs, it's using a worker and an Outrix engine to do so. And also from a redundancy perspective, so if we want to have the backup done, the persistence layer that, that is the MongoDB, so that's one way for you to keep in mind that you can always do this to protect your Outrix server for, from breaking or corrupting its data sets, its database. So of course, the point to scalability here. So if you have performance demands, you can scale your worker, have more workers or have more cores to one specific worker. You can add more gallery capacity. So the idea here is that you have a more seamlessly, seamlessly user experience throughout the gallery to your end users. And also if you have a failover strategy or redundancy, you can add a database here to its capacity. But of course, we have a table for that. This was, was shared by the, the Outrix, by Outrix team. And for each of the skill points, you can see here. So if you need redundancy, you can scale any of them. Of course, we can always start thinking about scaling the worker for you to be able to run more process. But if you have a lot of end users, because one of the greatest thing about Outrix Gallery is that it's all licensed by number of cars. So you can add an infinite amount of users to start leveraging the, your Outrix workflows. 
but of course, if you are, or maybe you have an IIT policy there that you need to have redundancy. So that's when you start thinking about the MongoDB, right? And this is what those options actually looks like. So have ways here to scale out your worker nodes. You can have one here inside your main controller. You can also scale all of those out. You can have here your load balancer and also one more instance of your gallery for the load balancer to decide for each gallery component it will address that command to. And here are the replica sets for the, your MongoDB failover strategy. All right, let's start talking about implementation planning. So what do you need to be aware beforehand before thinking about an Outrix server deployment? So the first part there is for you to identify all the people, all the responsibles for, for everything that you have in your Outrix server environment. So first thing here, you need to think about the administrator. It's not your DBA, it can be a different person here, but it's the user or a group of user that we will start managing everything that you have inside your Outrix server, all the permissions, all the accesses that you need to provide, all the credentials, everything related to the Outrix gallery itself. Of course, that we will have a session covering what can be done from an admin side. But of course, you need to think about who will be scheduling, who will be publishing, who will be primarily using gallery, so the idea here is for you to have the gallery only for developers, or we start leveraging uh, those developers to start creating analytical apps for the end users. And with these questions answered, you can think about how your Walter server is going to be. Do we need to start scaling right off the bat? or you can start with a single node environment. But also from the IT perspective, who will be your DBA? Who will be responsible for the Outrix service? Who will be responsible for the mail server? Who you need to contact to get your mail server, your host? How about the SSL and the network setup? So that's things that you need to always be aware beforehand or before implementing your Outrix server. Also about requirements. So what actually you will be assessing. So we'll be assessing files. You have access to all the database there. All the parts are available or for example, share folders. So your the user that will be running your Outrix service or your Outrix server has access to all of this? Does the server have access to all the APIs and plugins that you need to connect to? As well as everything related here. So we'll, we'll be using spatial capabilities. We will be using predictive analysis or gallery API usage in order for you to establish how will be the usage for your worker nodes, how many workflows will be run. Of course, that maybe you don't know that when you start planning, but that's one thing that you always need to be aware. And the usage report will provide that kind of information for you as well. And these are a few examples for you to start thinking about. So of course we have here a single node environment for you to have at max 20 users. And of course you have different ones here 
and of course the X large environment here, you are scaling out your workers. You have a MongoDB replica set because imagine you have there more, maybe more than a thousand users using a lot of different workflows. What happens if your MongoDB crashes and it corrupts everything there? And you have also the load balancer here because you need to be aware that your end user needs to have, once again, let me try this word, seamless, seamless yes, I got it, a seamless user experience. Because if not, your user will stop using Outrex Gallery because it takes a lot of time for, for you to run or for you to get to a specific workflow, right? And when we are talking about the single node environment, so here you can see the hardware recommended to it, right? To so have 16 gigs at least of RAM, a disk size that's equal or greater, and it needs to be greater if you start using, for example, spatial packages there. And also SSDs are always recommended because as I mentioned before, the worker, the engine uh, uses in-memory technology, but when you have no memory whatsoever available, it starts to write in to your hard disk, right? But also one thing that I mentioned as well here, so you are able to already scale, scale out your worker for your server here, your main server to only be, able, be responsible for managing the scheduler, the gathering the database, but the worker that's doing all they have lifting regarding the data preparation, the workflow running, you can scale that out. And that will improve a lot of your capabilities here. All right, lastly, we have a quick start and checklist guide here. And we have three different checklists here. So the first one is for you and you will be receiving that if you are attending this webinar is a checklist for you to install. Everything that you need to be aware when installing your Outrix server. So I'm gonna be pretty quick, quickly here. So you need to be aware of, you need to have your license key available. That's the, the first step, right? It's better for you to download everything already. So have the Outrix server installation file already downloaded, predict the tools and all the packages that might be using there. Because for example, you have one data package that has more, more than 200 gigs. You need to have a Windows service account for you if you want to use this run as credentials and you will be understand what that actually means. And also all the privileges, administrative privilege for the server, right? About configuring server settings. So you need to be aware that you need to have all the drivers installed already on the server. If you are using Oracle, have your TNS file already available there. SSL certificates, it's better for you to have that installed already in your environment and everything related to the parts. So you have here the app address, you can need to define that before configure everything, but also relate here to the authentication method that you're gonna be using, right? Once again, I'm talking here very briefly about this because you will be receiving that in your emails as well. And also, one last checklist there for you to for your gallery settings. So in order for you to start testing, because of course you, you installed everything, you configure everything as you're supposed to, but you start testing. So let's have one shareable workflow there for us to test if the, the server is working. For example, you can try connecting to a SQL server there and let's check uh, after publishing the workflow to your server, let's see if you still have permission or if you are able to download the data from your data source. It's always great for you to have two user accounts. One, for you to start administering, checking if you have a, a, a user 
for the user side and other for the admin side of things as well, for you to test everything that is happening between those two. Data connection, for you to start testing, if you have all the permissions to connect to your, your server there, your data source. An Outrix designer, for you to start testing, if you are able to connect to the Outrix gallery, so if you, have, if you don't have any issue regarding the parts, and everything related to macro. So if you are using Tableau or BI, Salesforce, or anything else related to macros, you need to install all of those in your Outrix server as well. And last, if you want to customize your gallery as well with your logo, that doesn't hurt, right? We can also format everything to our own corporate colors, but that's it. I think for today, that's it, everyone. Thanks a lot for attending. I hope that you had a great time as I had. And if any of you are trying to develop a chess engine, please let me know. But let's check here if I have any other question that I can walk you through. We have a lot of different ones. Let me see. There's a couple live ones, Fernando. Yeah, I'm seeing the first one. I am a very good chess player. Let's talk about chess with Outrix. That, that's great. Let, let's play also. Let's see if Outrix developers are good at chess. But maybe um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, your, your name, it seems like uh, I, I don't, I can't even pronounce your name, Schwammenhofer. Sh Sh that, that seems like a, a really great chess player. So I, I'm unable to. Maybe I don't want to play with you, Alan. Let's check the second one here. So this may be mentioned already, but I just want the reminder, make sure designer version and user are publishing. Yeah, that, that's great, Nikki. So if you are installing an Outrix server there, you need to keep be aware that your Outrix server needs to be at the same version or higher than all the Outrix designer that you may have there. Because if not, the users won't be able to, to publish the workflows to your server. So if it is possible to share this PowerPoint, but we, we are gonna be uh, including this, loading this to your, our YouTube channel. And we're gonna be sending, of course, that documentation for you as well. So we're gonna send everything that I, I'm not, I'm not sure if we are able to share this PowerPoint. I, I think we are, but if not, you can do the same way that as, as I do, start printing everything from the from their YouTube channel. That's really manual. Maybe we can start thinking about Outrix doing that. But that's it. But thanks a lot, guys. Once again, have a great day, a great week. I think we have on two more days there. Two more days for us, for us to really work hard within our Outrix designer. And if you have any other questions whatsoever, you can email us and we'll be more than happy to answer anything that you have there. So that's it for today. I think it's good afternoon, good night, good morning. It's better for me to say good day for everyone there. And thanks a lot for joining here. Our session. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted.